Oh baby, I've not seen this much orange in a long time. You do see orange game cubes loose in hard offs quite frequently, but I've not seen this many assembled all together. I'm Jay Contra, and I'm here at the newest hard off on the island of Kyushu. This is the first time I've ever been here. And it's a special moment for me being here in the uh, Kumoto City Kita Ten. I can't remember if that's the exact name, but it's definitely got Kita in the name, being in the north part of the city. And this store opened about a year or two ago. And I came over to check it out. I've now been on every hard off on the island of Kyushu, so I'm glad that you're sharing this moment with me as we look at some anywhere from about down here we've got $30 or $35 for a GameCube up to $40 for a GameCube and I'm not entirely sure about the differential. And what's also weird to me is that this silver Game Boy player for the GameCube is the same price as the GameCube itself with the controller adapters that's so weird I don't get it whereas you could also just buy the orange adapter with the GameCube for 40 bucks I don't know I don't know the pricing scheme here everything kind of seems a bit out of whack oh, uh, model one mega drive with a oh, with a mega pad Is that off-brand I'm guessing that's off-brand third-party but it's going for 50 bucks and we've got, oh, interesting, um, a GameCube complete in box but with a third party S video cable. That's so weird. That's interesting. I've not seen Hardoff put in S video cable in a something that didn't originally have it. And then, oh wow, a great looking white, not yellowed Famicom. And we've got another one. So we've got one for 40 bucks with the AC adapter. And then here's one without the AC adapter, going for 35 bucks. That's not bad. And then we, of course, have the AV Famicoms that what I'm guessing has settled down to about 80 bucks with all the cords and two controllers for the AV Famicom. We've actually got a bunch of those. God, I really gotta get around to buying one of those one of these days. Uh, my one at home has conked out. We've got, wow, lots of Dreamcasts. None in the box. That's unfortunate, but we've got a bunch of Dreamcasts going for about $30. So here we've got one for $30. And then we've got one for $40. I'm guessing this, this looks a bit more roughed up. It looks like it's probably been baking in the sun or it was in a smoking household. Because this one looks nice and clean. We're going for $50. Bucks. Here we've got... Well, Sega Saturn. Okay, well, 50 bucks. I thought that was expensive, and then I saw it has the memory expansion, or the, I guess, you know, the save uh, device in the back. That's going for 50 bucks. Well, this one, well, it's got an extra controller, and it's the later model. It's going for 50 bucks as well. Here's, here's one. No controllers. This is just the console itself. This is something, this kind of belongs in the junk. Oh, no, wait, no. It has two. See, it's got written there. It has two controllers. It's got all the cables with it, actually. What am I thinking? It's so weird. Okay. Well, it's got everything with it, but whatever. Just got, always got to check that label. And then the saddest story I've seen of price, of price increases in Japan is how the Neo Geo... You couldn't give these away, folks. You couldn't give these... I mean, you could maybe have sold these for, like, 50 bucks a few years ago. But now it's going for a hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, these controllers alone can easily go for, I think, 30, 40 bucks now. Maybe that's the reason. But it's so weird, but they've got, you know, for a new, new hard house tend to have good selections on things after they first open, because they have a big drive to get people to sell them their stuff. And I don't know if they bring in things from other stores or from other prefectures, but we've got a good selection of items. And then we go around to the other side, and we get to the more modern stuff. And we've got some PS2s, uh, you know, I guess the, more, the PlayStation stuff. I guess we were just looking at the Nintendo and Sega stuff. Now we're in the Sony. It starts, it's all starting to come together. Oh, wow, beautiful. I love 
I love red PlayStations. Look at all oh, this beautiful machine. This is a hundred and forty dollars for a slim red PlayStation. It's a perfect red. I love this system, although I'm not quite ready to spend a hundred and forty dollars on a slim PS2 when I've already got like two of them. Then oh, also the beautiful white lightning PlayStation 3. Oh, phenomenal console. Here we go. Oh, well, I think I thought I'd figured out their system and then here we've got here we've got the Wii's. Oh and then oh yeah the red it's another red continuing our theme the red Wii that came out with the 25th Mario anniversary going for 80 bucks. It's really the only reason you should be seeing a Wii that expensive is if it's the right one. And on the Wii U, we hardly knew ye. Now something I've noticed with my Wii U at home, yep, it's happened here, is that the, the thumbsticks are starting to go yellow, even though I haven't played it. I don't know if it's because I didn't wipe it down after using it, but it seems like it's happening here too. This one seems clean. Maybe the person had cleaner hands than my dirty gaijin hands. And here, a little bit, a little bit. I've noticed the, the, the white pad for the Wii tends to get a bit dirty and starts turning yellow, especially where your hands have been. So I'd be careful. I don't... <laughs> if you wanted to preserve your Wii U, I'd make sure to wipe off the thumbsticks at least. I don't think the rubber interacts well with, you know, our bodies. <laughs> So those are the consoles. That's oh, here's a um, oh, I didn't notice that. Here's another core graphics. Just saw one of those at the uh, at the Southern Art Off, and it's got all of its connectors. I'm going for 80 bucks. That's not bad. I wish it was maybe 10 bucks cheaper. Nothing else. No, nothing exciting in the. Uh, Take a look at the boxed games. That's actually something that I noticed is they had perhaps the most the most N64 boxed games I've seen in a long time. N64 games have still made cheap, but the boxes have kind of been dwindling. So I thought we might go through, look at this. Five dollars for Ogre Battle 64 complete in box. It's, it's in fair condition. It's not in the best condition. It's still five dollars for that. So we've got we've got Wave Race. It's going for three bucks. And there's I've been seeing a lot more Neon Genesis Evangelion. I don't know why I've been seeing all of that, but that's going for about I guess it's 27 bucks. Let's see. There's Ocarina of Time going for the usual nine dollars. Anything else? More Wave Race. I can't. Unfortunately, I can't show you much just because it's actually it's really packed. It's more packed than. A, than I would have expected it to be. And so it's kind of difficult showing off all of these games one by one. Let's see if I can maybe move around my, my hand a little bit. Here's Gooey Man. Sonic Wings Assault. I don't see that. That's so weird. The Sonic Wings brand, I mean, if you remember, it was a 2D. The so Sonic Wings was a 2D you know, shooting game, and then for the N64, they made it 3D. It's so weird. I don't know why they did that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything cool. Just this off all that shooty game. We got Mario Kart $9. I don't, you know, oh, there's a lot of common games here. Nothing rare. But still cool stuff like look at this. And then we go over to the Super Famicom stuff and they have a whole wall of good Super Famicom stuff. So let's take a few moments and let's enjoy because here we've got, what was this, Record of the Holy War? Or I can't remember, Genealogy of the Holy War, I think. This is going for 16 bucks. That's pretty good for this. I think this is usually like a $20 game. Here's Yoshi's Island going for nine dollars. See that a lot. Here's Final Fantasy IV going for five bucks. Not Final Fantasy VI loose going for three dollars. Oh, wow. oh, Batman Returns. This is actually a really good uh, beat 'em up game in the style of uh, Streets of Rage. This is really cool. I think it's a good game. It's going for sixteen bucks. Oh, and then oh, there we go. All the Final Fantasy games for the Super Nintendo. And we got five going for $9. Oh, and there's 
the other Fire Emblem game. Well, no, there was actually three. But that's the, there's um, uh, Mystery of the Seal. Yeah, it's one for five bucks. The other boxes, I'd like to show off the boxes. Oh, look, oh, here's Super Mario RPG. It's going for uh, five dollars. Nice, that's actually a great price. The box is beat up, but it's a good price. Uh, for some reason, I'm gonna try to this. Oh, Donkey Kong 2. I see price variations on this. Anywhere from 10 to 16 bucks. This is an expensive copy. I would not spend more than 10 bucks on any of the Donkey Kongs uh, for the Super Famicom. One day, one day oh, I will buy you. <laughs> but not for $16. Oh my god, Super Metroid. It's going for 16, also 16 bucks. Else? Oh, here's Aladdin. Oh, nice. That's going. That's in a great. That's in great condition. I think. Isn't there like a fight over whether the Super Nintendo or the uh, or the Genesis version of Aladdin is better? That's going for twenty bucks. Anything else? Oh, there's Super Mario Kart going for twenty dollars. And then here we. Oh, interesting. So. Apparently there's a problem, if you look at the, it's, they've written down the condition. This seems to be a, a store that pays attention to condition, unlike some others. And here it says there's a problem with the uh, the back of the cartridge. And so that's why it's going for $13, rather than that $20 copy over there. And also here's the original Street Fighter 2, going for three bucks. Pilot Wings, going for $9. Space Invaders going for three dollars, and here's a loose copy of Donkey Kong 2 going for five dollars. Can we find anything cool? Family Style Five. Oh wow, cool wrestling game. All Star Dream Slam. That's three bucks. I'm trying to look for boxes. Unfortunately, the uh, Super Nintendo boxes don't have that as much variety as the. Uh, as the other games. Tour Racing. Super Pong. Let's see there. Nope. Okay. Let's move over. Oh, wow. Well, oh, Baton Kaitos. Or was it Baten Kaitos? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I always said Baton Kaitos. About 20 bucks. That might not be bad, actually. And something you gotta be careful when getting a Japanese version is that it came in two separate game cases that are collected in this big box here. So you always want to make sure you get the two game cases, the two games in the two cases. <laughs> oh wow! Some uh, whoa, 70 bucks for this Neo Geo Pocket game. Super Ryoru Mahjong. 70 bucks for a Mahjong game? That's weird. Neo Geo Pocket stuff is another thing that's really gone out of control. Like Neo Geo Pocket used to be kind of cheap here in Japan. I don't know what happened. Oh, and there's a Berserk game that's going for 12 bucks. Oh, here's Echo the Dolphin. Going for 12 bucks. Is that good? Is that, I don't know. I don't know what the American Echo the Dolphin goes goes for. I know a lot of Japanese Sega uh, Genesis games are much more expensive than you would expect, just simply because the Sega Genesis did not sell well here, and so the games can be hard to find. Here's Shining Force 2. We just looked at Shining Force 1. Shining Force 2 is going for 12 bucks. Mm -hmm. Oh, so there's some Famicom um, Romance of the Three Kingdom games. There's, um, I don't even know what that is on the right. I've not seen that before. And here's how much Fighting Vipers is. If it's more than, yeah, I was gonna say, if it's more than $2. You should only be spending one dollar for Fighting Vipers. Not because it's a bad game, but just because it's so fun. It's another Evangelion game, three dollars. This 
man, it's, uh, the Sega Saturn is seems a bit impenetrable just because there's so many games that came out for it, and a lot of them have not necessarily aged well. Although what has aged well is Panzer Dragoon. Thirteen dollars. That's a good price. Well, I'd, say, I'd say ten bucks would be a good price. <laughs> if you'll let me say that. Oh, let's. Um, yeah, we've got a few minutes we can go through. Some two card games. Oh, although, actually, no, we're running out of time. I wanted to go into the junk section. Because there are some very interesting things. I would really like to show you guys. There we go. That's the... Wish I could learn how to play the piano. <laughs> Wish I had time for that sort of stuff. Here we go. Here we go to the game showcase. Oh, actually, I forgot to show you the NES games. I found some American NES games. Uh, but that's that's all on the other side of the store. And they also had a bunch of American, or I guess North American, uh, Xbox and Xbox 360 games. That tends to happen. You know, people come over, they bring their games, and they don't really feel like keeping them or taking them back, so they just get rid of them at hard off. So you do see foreign games here every once in a while. We've got some over here, and I don't know if they're filthy gaijin games, so they have been relegated to the junk. But the other really cool thing I wanted to show you was, for one, a twin Famicom that has seen better days. Um, it did not have, okay, so it says, see, this would be a good price if it had its power adapter. Unfortunately, it does not. And it's also really beat up. You might have to clean this for a little bit to get it in, you know, a good looking condition. But this is going for 5,000 yen. Well, 5,400, which is about $50. If this was working, it would easily be a $200 plus machine. Probably what's happened is not only did they not, were they not able to test it because it uses a special power adapter. And a slot in the back here. But also, um, of course, with Famicom disk systems, you want to be sure that the belt drive works. And so you can find out twin Famicoms and hard off for cheap, and all you've got to do is replace that belt drive, and you'll have a $200 system right there. They also had a Neo Geo Pocket, and apparently there was a, oh, apparently there was, it does not have the battery lid on it, and so it's going for $10. Oh, and then here's a junk Wii U. Oh, it did not, oh, it does not have its power adapter. Oh, well those are pretty cheap. A $50 Wii U is not, is not bad, well, and interestingly enough, Here's one with the power adapter going for 64, well, like 60 bucks, yeah. I think, well, I don't know, it could be different by the time you're watching this, but at the time, uh, the exchange rate is going for about, uh, I'd say 112 yen to the dollar. So just kind of take 10% off whatever you're looking at and you'll have a, a, a good dollar amount. And then here we go to the graveyard of PlayStations. Wow, that's a lot. Holy crap, that's a lot of Super Famicom junk. I'm looking, I'm just looking at the, uh... It's interesting, because normally hard-offs don't indivi give individual junk consoles these, you know, if they have masses of them. They don't normally label them, but here we've got lots of them labeled for 500 yen, and... Well, like, see here, this got power, but it didn't display... Um, this got power, but it didn't display... Okay, so this stack didn't display. These didn't display either, but but apparently this displayed, but it had weird colors. Interesting. So we've got a whole legion of problem Super Famicoms. It's just interesting to me because usually Super Famicoms are really durable. And wow, oh, so much junk. Oh, and then the next first, it was the PlayStations. You now the last couple years. It's been the Wii's. And more junk, although it's all, it's standard junk. It's not a, I don't want to say it's a bad junk section. It's just standard. Go, let's check. <laughs> Always check the stick. Mm -hmm. Yep, more power cables. 
I have, I'm, I'm, I just want to take a look at the junk games, PS2 junk games. Wow. See, the thing is, they get so many PS2 games in that these aren't seen as saleable. So they just kind of throw them in the back here because there's no point. Like, why would you need to display three copies of Gundam Seed? I don't know. Um, yeah, Gundam Seed. I actually haven't watched Gundam Seed yet, so I don't think I should talk trash about it just yet. Although it's anime, so I'm sure it will be trash, even though I love Gundam. <laughs> and on those fighting words, I'm going to call it here. This has been the Hard Off in Northern Kumamoto City. Kumamoto Kita is what I'm going to call it. I've been Jay Contra. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And mahalo.